Welcome to the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative, or ITSI 101 for healthcare professionals. My name is Carrie, and I am a volunteer for the United States ITSI Reference Group, or USIRG, which is an ITSI-led country-specific work group to assist in your implementation of ITSI. Today, I will be covering the basics of what you need to know about ITSI. Following this short presentation, you will be able to define ITSI and why it was established, list safety features, become familiar with ITSI levels, and know where to go for free ITSI resources. What is ITSI? The International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative Framework is a global texture modified diet standard for all languages, all people, and in all settings. ITSI consists of a continuum of eight levels, zero through seven, where drinks are from levels zero through four, while foods are from levels three through seven. Look at the framework. You can see how each level has words, numbers, and colors. At the bottom of the screen is an example of the use of an ITSI symbol that makes it easy to identify and learn. The ITSI definition is international because it has been so far adopted into 30 countries and has been translated into 13 languages with more to come. It's dysphagia, meaning it is intended for people who have trouble chewing and swallowing. It's a diet guideline for describing texture modified diets and drinks that are appropriate for people with dysphagia. It's standardization of diet orders to simple words that translate well. Each diet has a standard terminology or words, numbers, colors, and symbols. It's an initiative that started in 2013 to reach a consensus around the world on how to identify, describe, prepare, and serve safer food and liquid textures for people with dysphagia. The ITSI framework provides a common terminology which is so important. There has been much confusion around diet names and what is served on these texture modified diets. The ITSI framework includes detailed definitions and testing methods. These describe food textures and drink thicknesses. The ITSI testing methods are easy, reliable, and accessible ways to test any food or drink. We must first ask ourselves, why does food texture and thickness of a drink or liquid matter? Certain properties of food, such as dry and crumbly or sticky and hard textures, can be associated with risk of aspiration, choking, or even food impaction in the esophagus. Both children and adults with chewing and or swallowing difficulties are at greater risk of food or liquid entering the airway, called aspiration, and or difficulty clearing food through the mouth, throat, and esophagus. Our collective healthcare goal is to reduce negative healthcare outcomes, such as dehydration and malnutrition. If a patient is diagnosed with a swallowing dysfunction, part of the treatment plan may include diet texture modifications to reduce aspiration or choking risk or to improve swallowing efficiency. The problem, however, is that not everyone across the globe or even at the next level of care down the street describes modified foods and liquids in the same way. For example, while we can all agree that the top photo on the right represents puree texture, the bottom photo on the right may be classified differently depending on the facility. Is it ground, diced, chopped? The inconsistent terminology is a worldwide issue surrounding dysphagia diets. Inconsistent and confusing terminology can result in the patient receiving food and liquid textures that may compromise chewing and swallowing safety and efficiency. The primary objective of ITSI is to promote safety through common terminology for all ages, 
in all care settings and for all cultures. ITSE came together in 2013 to create the safer standards resulting in the International Dysphagia Diet Framework. What does this mean for you? It helps us all speak the same language in our day-to-day -day teamwork to meet the needs of individuals with dysphagia. The ITSE framework is evidence-based, internationally and interculturally valid, and features a common language that is broadly supported with strong operational definitions for each texture. Previous dysphagia diets were subjective. ITSE defines standardized testing methods and measurements to determine which foods and drinks are included within each level. Common eating utensils, such as forks, spoons, and chopsticks are used in food testing. These methods are simple, inexpensive, easily accessible, reliable, and can be used by everyone. Adopting the ITSE framework will provide objective improvements as noted on this slide. Let's look at the difference in pre-ITSE versus now. Before ITSE, there was much confusion. Now, ITSE is the only framework supported by all stakeholders and professional organizations, such as the American Speech Language Hearing Association, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and the Association of Nutrition and Food Service Professionals. As of October 2021, ITSE will be the only texture modified diet framework recognized by the Nutrition Care Manual published by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Although not mandatory, implementing ITSE shows that you are meeting both professional standards of practice and quality. Now that we understand why it is so important to implement ITSE, let's review the terminology and descriptions for each ITSE level. When using ITSE descriptors, make sure to always use at least two identifiers, the words and the number. You can also see the ITSE symbol that easily identifies the level with the color and number. Thin, level zero, flows like water, milk, tea, coffee, juice, soup broth, and many supplements are all examples of level zero drinks. Slightly thick level one is thicker than water, but can still flow through a straw. Some drinks, drinks may be naturally slightly thick, like some fruit nectars or certain varieties of nutritional supplements and baby formulas. This is a new exciting level, even for adults with dysphagia who maybe only need a slightly thickened liquid. Slightly thick level one is thicker than water, but can still flow through a straw. Some drinks may be naturally slightly thick, like some fruit nectars or certain varieties of nutritional supplements and baby formulas. This is a new exciting level even for adults with dysphagia who maybe only need a slightly thickened liquid. Mildly thick level two drinks can be sipped from a cup or straw. They pour quickly from a spoon, but they flow more slowly than a thin or slightly thick liquid drink. Here's a key point. Whether you are making your own or purchasing pre-thickened liquids, you need to perform the ITSE flow test to confirm the thickness of the liquid. You can even do the flow test on supplements or even liquid medications. Moderately thick liquid and liquidized food are both level three as they have the same thickness, the same properties when swallowing, and the same descriptions and testing methods. They can be consumed by cup or spoon. Many liquidized soups, cream of wheat, and gravies are good examples of moderately thick liquids. It's chose a gravity flow test using a 10 ml syringe as a simple, easy to use, and objective measure to classify drinks based on their rate of flow through a syringe in 10 seconds. Here we see the flow test with ITSE slightly thick, 
level one, through moderately thick, level three. The ITSI level is determined by the volume remaining in the syringe after 10 seconds. Observe that there is less liquid remaining on the left for slightly thick and mildly thick liquids, indicating that the liquid flow through quicker and is thinner than moderately thick. Thin liquid flows through the syringe in about seven seconds. Extremely thick liquid level four and puree level four are connected in the same pyramid in that they have the same properties, descriptions, and testing methods. It is important to get the puree texture accurate. It does not require chewing. It must be a smooth and moist texture with no lumps and not sticky. Minced and moist level five does not require biting and minimal chewing only is required. These foods can be easily mashed with just a little pressure from a fork. There is a particle size restriction at this level. Pieces should be no larger than four millimeters and no longer than 15 millimeters for adults and less than two millimeters for children. Adult size particles should be small enough to fit between the tines of a fork. Soft and bite sized to level six is tender and moist. These foods can be mashed or broken down with pressure from a fork and require a moderate amount of chewing. There is a particle size restriction at this level. Pieces should be no larger than 15 millimeters, roughly a half inch for adults, and less than eight millimeters, roughly a fourth of an inch for children. This means that the particle size for adults should be no larger than the width of a fork, which is the average size of an adult thumbnail. The child's pinky nail is a good measurement for pediatrics. This size restriction was selected because a piece of food would fall through the voice box and trachea and not block the upper airway or trachea. Soft and bite size can help minimize choking risks. Easy to chew level seven includes normal everyday foods of soft and tender textures that can easily be cut or separated with the pressure from the sides of a fork. The size of food pieces is not restricted at this level. Therefore, this level is not intended to prevent choking. Foods that are tough, hard, chewy, fibrous, stringy, or have seeds, bones, or gristle are considered non-compliant on this level. Transitional foods are items that start as one texture, such as firm solids, and change into another texture, specifically when moisture, such as water or saliva is applied, or when a change in temperature, such as heating, occurs. These foods may be used for developmental teaching or rehabilitation of chewing skills. ITSI provides a testing method to determine if a food is a transitional food to make sure the food item dissolves or disintegrates quickly to a liquid or puree. It should be noted that bread is not recommended on the ITSI's texture modified diets as bread is a very common item that causes choking or airway blockage. In general, bread can be assessed for safety by the swallowing specialist, typically the speech language pathologist, to provide bread on texture modified diets based on comprehensive dysphagia evaluations. Sometimes bread may be provided to meet a person's preferences and wishes according to their goals of care or within a person-centered care approach, and this must be documented well. Similarly, mixed consistencies, such as dry cereal and milk, are also not recommended on the ITSI's texture modified diets. The liquid portion of these items can be aspirated while someone is trying to chew the solid portion. Just like bread, mixed consistencies need to be assessed by the clinician. The ITSI framework and descriptors are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 license and can be used freely in your educational and training materials with appropriate attribution.
However, you should not alter the ITSI framework in any way. Alterations may lead to confusion and errors in diet texture or drink selection for patients with dysphagia. Such errors have previously been associated with adverse events, including choking and death. Organizations may decide to allow exceptions to diet orders, and your facility should have policies and procedures in place. This is based on a person-centered care approach and clinical judgment by the medical team. The person is part of that medical team. For example, someone may be on a soft and bite-sized level six, but the order includes soft breads to meet the person's goals. You could have a list of common exceptions that are built into your ordering system. ITSI provides standardized testing methods and measurements to determine whether a food is appropriate for a specific ITSI level. Common eating utensils, such as forks, spoons, and chopsticks are used to determine food levels. For example, puree foods are tested with the spoon tilt test and should slide easily off a teaspoon without sticking. Soft and bite-sized foods are tested with the fork pressure test and should squash and change shape when pressure is applied with a fork until your thumbnail blanches white. Ideally, the food sample should not completely stick to the fork. The food and liquid testing is expected to be performed in the facility's kitchen and at the point of service to ensure compliance with the ITSI criteria. For more information on food and drink testing methods, please go to itsy.org forward slash testing methods. Providers can place orders for modified texture diets by choosing both the ITSI food level and the ITSI drink level. Add texture diet order exceptions if assessed by clinician and per your facility established procedures. Add therapeutic diet if needed. Make sure to dual label as you are transitioning to ITSI by adding the old diet name to the end of the order, such as mildly thick level two nectar thick liquid. Look for the approved ITSI abbreviations list under the resources tab at itsy.org. You can also go to the bottom of ITSI's homepage and click on the link to the United States to find this PowerPoint called Best Practice for ITSI Terminology. Detailed rationale regarding the need for international terminology and definitions can be found in our open access articles. Links to these articles can be found on the ITSI website under Resources tab and then the Publications tab. We are near the end of our ITSI 101 training, but know you may want to learn more about this exciting change for the people you serve who have dysphagia. Here are some resources you may want to explore on your own. You can visit the ITSI website, www.itsi.org, to find implementation guides, diet audit sheets, presentations, and other US-specific resources. I also want to call your attention to the terrific consumer handouts for your patients and their caregivers. These are under the resources tab. You can also visit the ITSI YouTube channel for additional implementation content. And finally, you can download the ITSI app to your smartphone or tablet. The app is available for Android and iOS devices. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have further questions, please contact the U.S. ITSI Reference Group, a group of dedicated volunteers, at usa.itsi.org. At